I'm Aislinn Sarnacki, and you've discovered the Borealis Podcast, where we talk with fascinating people who research, work in, and think about the Maine outdoors. On today's episode, we meet environmental science professor Rob Sanford at the Millbrook Preserve in Westbrook, where alewives are making a comeback. When you have things that are this close to urban area, there's always a risk. You know, are they gonna, are we gonna be good custodians? Are we worthy of this? That's just ahead. Production support of Borealis is provided by the Nature Conservancy in Maine and Poland Spring and listeners like you. Thank you. USM Professor Emeritus Rob Sanford thinks deeply about the way humans impact nature. He's written several books, including Reading Rural Landscapes, a field guide to New England's past. One of the landscapes he's very familiar with is the Presumpscot River watershed, which includes Millbrook Preserve in Westbrook. I met him there to talk about alewives and more. So what makes Millbrook Preserve here special for alewives in this waterway in particular? Well, a couple of things. It's linked, it's in the Presumpscot watershed. And what we have is this feeds right in to the Presumpscot in an area that had historically been disturbed by an excessive amount of dams. Mm-hmm. And so these alewives are now coming up the river. They're going up here, up this small stream to reproduce because they're anadromous fish. And so it's very exciting to see them coming up here because they can get through the fish passage. Mm-hmm. And if we look at this corridor here, it's shielded, which cuts down on solar heating of the water. Mm-hmm. So it keeps it nice and cool for those. You can already feel we're about 10, 15 mm-hmm. degrees cooler than up there. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, It also has good vegetation here because what they've done is there's a path here, Mm -hmm. a recreational path to observe the fish. But if you're gonna come here and see fish, the odds are you're environmentally minded anyway. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of education that Friends of the Presumpscot and the Land Trust and other groups have been doing. So the stewardship here protects this area and the path here that we're on is not trampling down the bank, it's set back a little bit Mm -hmm. where there would have historically been a deer trail or other animal trails anyway. So what I'm seeing is a nice shielded stream Mm -hmm. and great habitat for these fish. There's a lot of structure in here so they can come up here and do their courtship thing and make their little fish. What do you mean by structure? Well, structure is what we call what debris, logs, uh, it's a lot stones, of that. things like that. Yeah. See, if you're an environmental consultant and you call it structure, you can get paid more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just stuff in the river. But, but that brings up an important point because sometimes people think when they're trying to protect a buffer, they'll mow it and clear it. But if it's naturally vegetated, it's going to have a lot of things in it. And if a stream or river is natural, it's going to have things obstructing flow. And anytime that does that, it makes a little backwater, a little eddy, a little place for little fish to hide and escape, and a pl- place, for, place for ambush predators to look. For these alewives, what it does is it gives them little pockets to rest from coming up here because they're going against the current all the way up. And it's exciting because they've been coming up here for a few years and you can go down and see them go through the fish ladder before. Mm-hmm. So to me, this is a very exciting, uh, piece of landscape here, part of the naturally restoring ecology of the area. And looking just a bit further away, the Presumpscot River, what's the story behind that and alewives coming back to that? Well, the story behind that is in in Maine, as in other parts of New England, as soon as folks could get somewhere, they'd put up a sawmill and start Mm -hmm. cutting things. And whenever they put up a sawmill, they'd block the flow of the river. And now for a big river, the sawmill would be partial and you could still have flow. But as it got, as they got bigger and people started developing hydropower, so they're not just using the mill for a saw, but they're using the mill later to generate electricity and blind stuff, started blocking the river. And as, as early as, if you go back to 1756, we have Chief Poland walking twice to Boston saying, hey, you know, what about this? He actually did and asked the governor to remove have the dams removed and the governor actually agreed with them. Politicians being what they were, the dams mm-hmm. never got removed. But so we, we've got centuries of having dams. So the alewives stopped coming up and some people would say, 
well, let's have the ALIs first and then we'll build the dam. And other people are going like, well, they're not going to come there because they didn't come from there and they don't have a chance. So it's sort of a compromise. Put the fish ladder in and sure enough, one year, a few more ALIs come looking around, seeing where they can go. <laughs> Next year, some more come and pretty soon before you know it, I've walked down, down this path here and I've seen several hundred just darting through like that. And it's just fascinating to see how quickly it can restore if yeah. given half a chance. Yeah, it happened quicker than they had expected, right? Yes, when they restored this, <laughs> it came back as they had hoped. It came back quite fast and the water quality here is quite good because that high flowing, that bubbling and churning mixes oxygen. It oxygenates the river, which purifies, kills some of the bacteria and promotes aquatic life. The kind of life that likes fast, medium and slow water. As before, you just had the slow water and it was just a warm water fisheries. Now we're getting this mix of an abdomen fish coming up. We, we've already had eels coming up like they would and we can hope that there'll be salmon someday too. And just imagine, I mean, there used to be all kinds of fish in there. Sturgeons, just like they have up by Augusta, you could see sturgeons and the Brzezumskat leaping. It was pretty yeah. exciting to the Europeans when they came there. And the <laughs> Indians, really, the native peoples really uh, named these river, named these areas primarily on the basis of characteristics of the river. Mm -hmm. Sakurapa, you know, mini falls, things like that. Yeah. So is there anything else about this preserve that you find fascinating when you walk around? This is a place people walk in a lot of times to see the fish. Um, I guess what impresses me is that this is it's an act of trust. It's an act of faith between the people who use it, the people mm -hmm. who said, let's let's donate, let's protect this land and the management and the city and government. So when you come along through here, I've seen things like I've seen um, the kids start to wade out when they're alewives and the parent going like, no, we got to let those guys have be stable, let them come along. And so I think this is well managed and well behaved. When you have things that are this close to urban area, there's always a risk. You know, are they going to, are we going to be good custodians? Are we worthy of this? We owe it to these fish. We owe it to the river system to let it come back. So I like that this is fairly linear. It follows along. It's got great viewing areas. It's a real slice, like you could be in the White Mountains for all you know right here. You just get that nice back in nature feeling with very little disturbance. Millbrook Preserve is part of the Presumpscot Regional Land Trust. The best time to see the alewife run there is late May or early June. I'm Aislinn Sarnacki. Thanks for joining us on the Borealis Podcast.